right welcome everyone to a tuesday evening class and it's a new class called my greatest losses So you're probably used to seeing my wins, you know, sometimes maybe games I drew, but most of the time, you know, in general, people like to show their wins, but today it's uh, different. So I'll show you a game that I lost and it was a big one. It was a game that uh, could have made me the US champion two years ago if I had win this game. No playoffs, nothing. I win this game, it's over, clear first. So and uh, let's take a look so i was playing a very tough opponent of course hikaru nakamura in the last game and he wasn't having a good tournament he had nothing to gain basically from this game i mean he could just finish higher up but he wasn't gonna surpass me or you know or get a medal so for him it was not very big but for me very big game round 11 the final round a little bit about the tournament situation at that moment we were tied for first three-way tie myself Wesley saw so, and Alex Onishuk and Wesley took a quick draw, very quick draw, in 30 minutes they drew and then Alex played for maybe hour and a half, two hours against Kamsky, that game ended in a draw. Right around when both games were finished and I'll stop at that moment in particular because you'll see I had some chances there. So Ikaru played knight f3. 118. Uh, I'm okay, thanks, thanks. So he plays knight f6 g3 d5 so we had the repi system <coughs> of course draw would be a great result but uh, you know then you enter this three-way playoff and you never know when you get to the playoffs what's going to happen you know uh, playoffs are very hard if you have to defeat two players so ideally you want to just win one game and finish the tournament ideally because you know when you get to the three-way playoff it's very hard so bishop g4 h3 and here, okay, I can play bishop h5, I can retreat, but also I can take on f3. I have both options. And just one thing to mention, in 2014 US Championship, I was in a three-way playoff. I won the first playoff against Alex Lenderman, and then I played the final match for the US Championship against Gara Kamsky. And I drew the first game and lost the second one, so I ended up finishing second in that US Championship. So I've been to those playoffs, and I was like, Okay, if, if I cannot do anything, then it's fine. But if I have a chance, I should go for a win. So I took one F3 because I can retreat as well. But this is a very solid system. So I like to play this way. In the D4, E6. Knight E2, Bishop E7. E4 by my opponent. I took. So I go to this position, which... I thought, considering the tournament situation wasn't bad at all, because now I go queen b6, putting some pressure on d4, sorry, queen b4, d4, and putting pressure on b2, and he cannot develop his bishop uh, that easily either. So he also plays c3, castles, and he plays queen e2. It's, you know, to play solid, it's good with black, and then you wait for opportunity because you know, most likely white is going to start pushing, trying to get some ideas. And that's exactly what happened. Now, look at this setup. Rook F, E8. I'll stop to the critical moment. So, Rook AD1. I was quite happy with my position. I thought all my pieces developed. Very, very hard to break this position. And my opponent started to play B4. Okay, I was quite happy to see this move because now there's some weaknesses on the queen side. So when opponent weakens the position with b4, what do we do? How do we try to attack that? I'm gonna put in a training mode from now on. Yeah. Now, what are we gonna do? A5. Sorry, one second. Pawn a5. Pawn a5, excellent. When opponent weakens the position, you start attacking him from the side. I was expecting maybe perhaps a3, but his move surprised me. He took. I was quite happy to see this because look at that now. He's got two weaknesses, the a2 pawn, c3 pawn. And the match, it was going so well. I was playing fast and confidently. Okay, right around this area, a couple of moves later. So bishop d2 played. And I played a good move, I think, here. 
let's see if we can find my move. So again, West saw game finished long time ago. The only game was Anishu game, which was about to finish pretty soon too. So both games ended in a draw. 95. I could do 95, but he wants to play C4, you know? He wants to play C4, so didn't want to particularly be sitting under that C4 there, okay? B5? Huh? B5? C6 pawn will be dropping in that case. Okay. The C6 pawn oh, is... Thanks. In general, we don't want to play C5, right? Uh, B5, not yet. Yeah. Not yet. Bishop mm, It's a move. It's a move. White wants to play A4 in this position. And then he wants to put his rook on b1 and start putting pressure on me okay so he is trying to play for adi what are we gonna do to stop that rook a a4 how do you stop it oh. i need you to make a move to stop a4 queen a4 absolutely queen a4 blocking it okay absolutely strong positional move in my opinion now he goes rook fb1 attacking my pawn And rook d7, I just protect. Rook b3, he played. Okay, he really has trouble with the a2 pawn. So now I played rook c8. Bishop b1, and what did I play here? You have to see my idea why I play that move. Why did I play rook c8, guys? What is the idea? I didn't just make a move, right? We never make random moves. Every move we play has an idea. What's the idea? Rook d7. So, well, I was going to say so you can push the b pawn. Aha, uh -huh. Adi. B5. B5, yes, exactly. I want to play b5 to stop c4, and then I can finally put that knight on a strong outpost on d5. So now I play b5, of course. He goes here. Okay, rook c1 in the first moment in the game here. So, what does he want to do? He wants to play c4 here, okay? And I didn't play the best move here. I played c5 here, which wasn't the best move, okay? Uh, but then he didn't reply correctly either to my move. So, black to play here. What is the strongest move here? to equalize the game. What would be the strongest way to play this to equalize the game here? And I can do that right here. Now nice to d5? 9d5 is the second best move. But then he gets to play c4, and I think he's maybe slightly better, okay? Very slightly better, like uh, knight d5, c4, takes, takes, queen a6, uh, and then, yeah, very, very slightly better for him, perhaps, this position, bishop f3, okay? Then maybe he will play some a4, okay? Not a not an easy move to play though. One thing I can tell you it's not a it's not a move that just comes into mind, you know, so easily. But then one, once you start calculating you realize more and more, wow, this move works. And it works very effectively. C five. That's what I played. In the game. That's what I played. And uh 
C5 would looked good actually, but it, it, there was one problem with it. Uh, B4 already uh, takes. Oh, okay. B4? B5 maybe? I see you have two pieces on the B5. If you push C5. Yeah, yeah, I played C5 and it worked out well because he didn't respond it correctly, but if he had played it correctly, then I think I'm losing a pawn there. No, no, it's a tough move to find. I didn't cross my mind. I didn't think about it too much, you know. I was just so excited about C5 and I just played it and and I guess my opponent trusted me and he just like, okay. And then he played another move to surprise me. And uh, it's like we both missed something, you know, here. What if we play Queen C4 and completely stop C4? Fantastic thinking, yes. The move is queen c4, believe it or not. Very powerful move, queen c4. Now, this would have just shut down everything. So he has to take, take, he goes here. Knight d5. Yeah, but I'm playing c5 next. So knight d5, now I attack the, the rook. And now I play g6, getting my escape square, luft. And now I go c5, opening up the position. Takes rook c5, and I'm very active here. I'm at least equal here, OK? Yeah, optically, it doesn't look great. You know, I'm doubling up my pawns and everything. But then I just get c5 in and break the position. Takes rook c5. Okay. My, my first move, but if I'm doubling the pawn, losing the B file, nobody. Yeah, I know, I know, but it's <laughs> just that's the thing, you know. You get such a strong knight on D5, then you get your Luft, and then you play C5, and I mean this position, uh, this position looks absolutely fine for Black. His bishops are not doing that much, here. and he's got to worry about this C3 weakness. You know, like if he moves the rook, I go Bishop F6, then he has to worry about this problem. At some point, maybe he's going to have to take my knight here. And black is just too active here. Anyway, I played uh, c5. I played c5, and my opponent, uh, he reacted interestingly. He played d5. Okay? But here, white can get some advantage here. If he just plays pawn takes pawn, it's, it's a hard move to play, because after this, it looks like, what do you really have here? But then there's suddenly there's this move rook c b1 and i cannot defend the pawn properly it's it's pretty strange but i cannot defend my b5 pawn so he might be winning that and then his pawns are not the greatest pawns but there's still extra pawn so white has advantage here okay so white white maintains advantage but instead he played here and now, for sure, I'm absolutely fine. I took, he takes, and a very important move here needed, okay? He really wants to play this move to get some control on the light squares. Which move we have to do to keep the position blocked and press? C4. Absolutely. C4 played. Rook C B one. So at this moment I knew that I'm absolutely fine here. I have I have a nice pawn structure. He's got two weak pawns on A2 on C3. The question is how you play for a win here. Okay? Right around here, all my comp com competitors already finished their games. So I'm in this situation. I feel like I'm slightly better here. A pretty safe position to play, but how to play? So let's see, I want to give you a chance to find the best plan here. 
okay? Because I had lots of ideas here. <coughs> if I draw this I, and we go to three-way playoffs, if I win, clear first. Everything is over. So the problem I have right now, my bishop is a little bit loose on e7. And when you have a position like this, you want to find a square that is going to be the most solid square. Okay? What would be the most solid square for your bishop? F8. Absolutely. And I should have played bishop f8. I mean, with accurate play, I think white equalizes here. But for example, look, if you play now queen d1, now I just... The key is to understand, that's where I missed in the game. The key is to keep the queens on the board. Okay? If you take on d5, I double the rooks and you're losing a piece. a4. But what's wrong in taking a2 pawn? Um, rook a1 maybe? Chopping the queen? Chops the queen, yeah? So I don't want to take and suddenly find myself in trouble, you know? Queen a7, a4. Bishop c5, putting pressure, and this looks uh, pretty comfortable for black because I have a lot of pressure. a5, I can just go to b7. I mean, the pawn just went a couple of moves and now it's stuck, it's not going anywhere. I've got a pressure on the bishop, I can double up the rooks. I mean, it's very comfortable for black this position. I should have played that move. Bishop f8, and uh, I think the only way after bishop f8 is to play this move bishop d2. That bishop is really bad, and it's important to try, try to play this move. Bishop d2, queen, imagine, but you have to give up the pawn. Takes, queen goes here, now threatening rook a1, trying to trap. I think this is how maybe they achieve the draw here. Bishop e3. Uh, queen c3, bishop d4, queen d3, queen d3 takes, bishop f6, Some, something like this, or, sorry, perhaps here's just rook d1. Then we'll take on d3, okay, I'm absolutely not in any risk to lose this position, I'll put the extra pawn, but uh, at least this way we're going to that three-way playoff, you know, next day. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a good lesson to learn, you know, when you have a loose piece, don't put on a squares that still going to be a little bit loose, you know, put it somewhere that it's just for sure, you don't have to worry about it. Bishop on FA will be protected, I would never have to worry about any back rank issues, and that would be much better. I play bishop d6. Again, keep in mind, I really like my position here, so I was like, I was happy to be in this situation, I thought I have h4, h5 ideas coming up. Of course, there's a little tactic. Bishop d5 takes knight rook d5 and bishop takes g3 check, winning the rook. So, but now he plays here, queen d1. And this is where the big mistake, okay? The, the mistake that cost me, uh, cost me a lot. So, I, I knew I shouldn't have traded queens. But, you know, I, I even had my hand. I didn't want to exchange. I was going to play the right move. But I ended up exchanging queens. Which, with the correct play, should be a draw still. But it's, you know, from a slightly better position now, I'm going to a slightly worse endgame. And to defend accurately. So it's, it's always very unpleasant when there is a big 
uh, switch like that in a game. So in this position, black must keep the queens on the board, okay? And here I should have just simply played the move that we've been discussing, queen a7, with the idea of bishop c5, okay? You cannot take this pawn because if you take then after bishop c5, you're going to be losing some material here. Uh, so queen a7, bishop f3 is the best move here. Then we get that position again, bishop c5, attacking on f2. King g2, rook e8, rook 1b2, I go rook d7, again, with the pressure, bishop cannot go on d2, I take, so he has to play rook e2 here, rook takes e2, bishop takes e2, and now, Queen a2, bishop is hanging, so bishop f3, and again, I probably have to just go back bishop here, and uh, takes on d5. At the end, at the end, it looks like it's probably still going to be close to a draw. I mean, this bishop is kind of misplaced, but there's just not enough material to, to do much here. I do have this interesting move, though, queen a8. Threatening rook takes e1. But white has the only move here. Or at least this move. And no longer this is a threat because king can take it. Well, there is a threat of queen, uh, queen to h1 at some point. So I'll probably just play g6. Queen f3, bishop g7. Most likely it will be a draw. But now things... Uh, become really problematic a little bit because now again I took took and I went back to p7 so again the better try probably would have been to play uh, bishop a3 to just prevent its opponent uh, has a strong pawn on a5 so I should just instead of playing here I should just try to prevent him from pushing the pawn this would have been an easier way for me. Bishop a3. And uh, this is not easy to push. And again, if you place bishop d5, you gotta watch out for some pins, okay? Some serious pins. All right. I play bishop e7, and now he pushed. Rook a8, he pushed, bishop d5. I thought, okay, I'm gonna win this pawn. Probably just going to be a draw, you know. Now rook a1. He's not, he's not making it easy, let should we say. He is defending this pawn. Um, and here, again, this a pawn is not really going to go anywhere at the moment. So I should have just uh, played king f8, you know. King f8, bring my king in a little bit closer and then try to win the pawn. King f8, king f8, g4 h6 and should be able to make a draw here no problem i went here directly and that allows the capture i could have played this differently then it's better to have the king in so i took now he goes bishop d2 and here unfortunately if my king was on here i would have been able to play the move bishop i would have been able to play the move bishop b6 but here, I couldn't play bishop b6 anymore because of capture. If I capture with the bishop, it's, I get pinned. Very unpleasant pin. And then bishop e3 is coming. I'm losing material. And if I take with a rook, bishop e3, and I cannot take background checkmate. Okay? So it's a problem. So now I regret it, you know, moving my rook because there's no need to do that. I mean, I'm coming there next. So just bring the king in and next move I will go for the same idea. 
and I don't have to worry any of these background ideas and most likely I'll secure the draw here I mean it's not that difficult this to hold takes takes I take and now again if given this position from a scratch you know black should be able to try to hold this you know like you know good chances for a draw but from a slightly better position now I'm no chances to win have to suffer and uh, yeah, it was quite difficult. So I played h6. Uh, bishop e3 attacking the rook. Rook a6. And again, I'm hoping to get the c3 pawn, but he goes here. I don't think I can defend the c4 pawn. The so bishop c7. Rook a6. My best bet is to trade the bishops off here. So bishop d6. I think this this is fine here. Um, my king is a little bit further now. Rook takes c4. Bishop e5. Rook c8. So okay, so we reach this position. And here, again, this is a move that. Uh, it's a very natural move to play here, and I should be trying to get some space on the queen side. On oh, sorry, on the king side, because so otherwise he's going to start pushing. So instead of playing the move rook a3, which I did, I should have started with g5 here, gaining some space. Okay, g5, c4, rook goes behind the pawn. Let's say c6, king g6, and it's incredibly hard. It's going to be incredibly hard to win this position. I mean, there's just one pass pawn. It's not going anywhere. My bishop is perfectly placed in the middle. My rook is behind the pass pawn where it needs to be. How is he going to make progress here? It's incredibly hard to win a position like this. I can put the pawn on f6. I can play h5 at some point. Put the king on f5. Yeah, but I didn't do that, unfortunately. This was important. I played rook a3 immediately, and now I play c4. Again, it's not too late to play this f4, but I didn't just put up a good resistance here. It was just very pity, but I didn't. Again, g5 needs to be played. And now I allow him this. It was important to put the rook behind the pawn. Now f6. And now, unfortunately, when I play f6, I allow him to cut my king. So my king cannot go to f5 now. c3. Uh, rook c3, c5. And now the problem is my king. I really misplayed this endgame. I mean, I could have just had this position with a pawn on g5, imagine. With a pawn on g5, we're talking about a completely different scenario. Now my king is stuck. I cannot move it. And he's just trying to bring his king to d2 now. He has a very simple plan. He wants to bring the king to d2. So, I had to go here, rook c4, king e4, now king got active, because if I had a pawn on g5 here, right, I would put my king on f5, and he could never reach there. So, yeah, this is already lost, I think, g4, now my bishop got locked, so I couldn't. Yeah, now it's just basically going to be a check and rook c6 covers. So if I go rook a6, a queens, and if I go rook c2, we just see a check. Okay, so I end up losing the game. Very tough game, as you can see, but a lot to learn from, you know. A lot to learn from in a sense that, you know, when there is a transition from a, you know, preferable position to a difficult end game, you still have to play it tough. And now, looking back, I mean, when I got to this end game, I'm just, you know, like, like this position. I mean, there's no need to move the rook on a7 right now because there's no threat. So bring the king closer, right? We know the rule. We have to have the king closer. So bring it here. He plays g4, and then only then we put the rook here. So let's say he plays bishop d2. 
then we will go here takes again take take here I'm wondering if I can even just take rook takes rook takes rook takes rook takes okay so let's say takes take and I mean Rook c5, I have bishop f b6 even here. Yes. But when, instead of capturing the rook on a5, wouldn't they capture the bishop on d Yeah, I take and I take your bishop on d2. Yeah, I was looking at that idea. If you take me here, I take you. Oh, it's over. I see. And you take here, and then I go here, and then I win this pawn. It's going to be a draw. So, yeah, I think this is just... Uh, really, I don't see any problem. I don't see any problem really holding this position. Uh, okay, maybe here. Um, okay, the idea is to get the rook, but with the rook we also have some ideas there. So maybe just bishop b6. Now, threat is rook, a, rook actually going to a2. So I have to play here. Okay, bishop c5. Okay, rook. Twenty-five. Again, it's yeah. You might get some rook endgame like this, but I just achieve a draw, you know, because of the weaknesses. Too many weaknesses in the camp. Uh, maybe you can go king f three. Okay, then I go king e7, bishop e3, I take, I take, okay, you can have the c pawn, I'm going to have your h pawn. And it's going to be a draw. Okay? Well, tough, tough one, huh? yeah. tough one. Well, of course, uh, big, the biggest mistake was trading queens. Yeah, this was, I had some nightmares about this move, queen d1, because... I there's even a video of it that was uh, you know on a YouTube in a live live and it shows that I'm re ready to play this move backwards reaching day seven you know there's no square and then I something stops and instead of making the correct move trusting my intuition I start to overthink my move spend a couple of more minutes and I end up taking because uh, really wasted time but I think it would be a very nice uh, idea I'm just curious you know like if what would have happened here because if my opponent would have continued to play aggressively for a win, if he does, then I have great chances to win. If he tries to defend, but for him again, draw it's not it's nothing. You know, for him he couldn't win the tournament with a win or a draw. For him it was more like he really wanted to win uh, two, which was good for me because that gave me chances. So again, bishop f3, bishop c5, the plan. You know, I just want to show you the plan once again. Yeah, this is a problem because it gets it gets pinned. Uh, so I can even play the move rook c to d8 and then capture bishop g3. So this this is some serious problems here. You cannot take the pawn. So here bishop c5. So this is a yeah rook e8 now putting pressure on the bishop. Double up the rooks. And again, like imagine he has to come up with this moves, give up the pawn just to try to, to make a draw here. I mean, obviously he's down a pawn here. He's not playing for a win. She takes. Rook, queen cannot take because e1 is ending. Not queen a8. Threatening rook takes e1. And amazingly, yeah, this king f1 <laughs> uh, looks like saves the day, yeah? I mean, I can grab the g6. Wait, uh, did we miss this tactic, rook e5? Wait, does it work? Wait, wait, actually, sorry. Queen f3 doesn't work, guys. Rook d1. 
we're winning a material now because rook d3 we just take rook f5 we just take so that means it's not so easy to untangle this you know it's a little bit tangled up you know so <laughs> how to untangle this do you see a way see rush yes before the option it wins if you analyze the game apparently that in the three pawn lands and the two other pawns yes we're having two uh, pawn lands and you have know, structured pawn and center yeah i have a better it's structure fine. i have better structure because i have two pawn islands yes three mm -hmm. um so, yes, that's Suresh's question about structures, you know, like here, I have a better structure, I have two pawn islands, yeah, three pawns on the one side and two in the center, then he's got this, he's got three pawn islands, okay, mm -hmm. so, so, but, you know, he really had to do something like this, because if he, uh, if, let's say, he tries to, I don't know, play, he doesn't want to give up the pawn, I mean, I mean, I'm going to double up the rooks next on this bishop, and the bishop moves, f2 is hanging. This pawn on c4, this is an excellent setup. Nice diagonal pressure here as well, you know. And these pawns are really restricting, and I double up the rooks, I have some h5 ideas as well. Imagine this is the best line to give up. If he doesn't want to do that, then maybe queen d2 he has to play. But again, it is it's unclear how 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 to get the pieces out here. H5. Yeah, but the, but that's the thing. If he doesn't want to go for that line to give up a pawn, he's gonna have to play this position. But th there is no chances to play for a win here. I mean, cannot really. I mean, I, I really don't see uh, because the pressure is still there. The pressure on e one gonna be there. The pressure on f two is still there. Uh, it's much much easier. Yeah, you got that b file, but there is no way to enter anywhere or do anything with it. Um, yeah, so this was the this was the game, this was the game, and when we traded queens, um, yeah, this was a bad decision. I was already getting low on time too, you know, and I went for this position. And here, of course, opponent's only thing is to push the pawn, right? What should I try to do to to prevent that? Adi, bishop a3. Bishop a3. Stop that pawn from moving. Make it more difficult for the opponent to advance the pawn. Because at the end of the day, I still have the good structure, guys. And if he cannot push the A pawn, how is he going to win the game? The only pawn is to push the A pawn to get some contra play. I mean, there, there is a way for him to remove this bishop. Bishop A3, like the li one of the lines is H4 here. With the threat of some bishop H3 move. Not an easy thing to see. Uh, rook a7 apparently is good. Bishop d5, bishop d5. Rook d5, and I just go rook c8. And then I will move this bishop and take on a2. Okay, still probably going to be down upon, but throwing chances here. But even the way I play, I think it's reasonable. I, I don't think I played... Uh, just, just this next decision was strange, you know, to to put the rook on a7, where I still have the control. He still has to work for it, take, taking d5. So, make one more move. L let him do whatever move, g4, h6, bishop d2. Okay, when the bishop gets there now, bishop wants to come in. I gotta just, let's make decision, okay? Bishop d5 has to take. Because if you go bishop e3, I think I just take. So you take. 
I have to be careful here. There's a trap. If I take like this, there's a rook b8. Defend, take, take, and a check. Okay? But I don't have to fall for that, you know? Bishop takes. Now I'm threatening to take this pawn. Bishop d5, I just take, take, take on c3. So I probably have to play this bishop d4 move. And. Hmm. I can just. Uh, oh, wait. There's a check here. And yeah, this is not so good. The king has to go back. Check and. You know, I might be taking over, you know, with 92 threats and stuff. So. Yeah, this is. Yeah, obviously not the right way to play. So here he had to take. 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 Again, rook d8 doesn't work. It's very important. I have rook d8 and d2 is hanging. So as to take, bishop takes. Bishop b6. Threatening rook a2 ideas. King f3, I just go here. Again, f2 pawn needs to be protected. The good news is for me, I have this, I have this, uh, the weak pawn on h3 to work with. So I can always do maybe something about that. So, he, okay, he can play king e2 maybe, but then, then, then it's a little problem, no? <laughs> Where is the rook going, guys? Nowhere, huh? Trapped piece. See, so it's, uh, we discover more ideas, you know? So that's why he has to go bishop e3, take, king takes, if he wants to keep a good structure, we go here draw if you take back with the pawn I mean I can I can play a move like rook a4 um, if I really want to do that just you know that's a little bit more passive defense but I think you should do it because once your king gets moving I can try to get behind it so should be able to hold yeah, the most important thing I learned it's in, even if it's a very a very important last game, let's say, right? You're playing, you still have to try to, you know, not to worry about the standings, tournament situation. Just try to play the best game you can. And I think in the beginning part I did, I liked uh, quite a few of my moves in this game. Uh, I thought my opening was very solid, very good for a last round game, and I waited for him to open up, which he did. I take, now I went here, another nice move, queen a4, fixing it. Then I was playing quite fast too, you know, quite fast, quite confidently. Now I rook b3, rook c8. I like this b5, very positional, trying to stop c4. He goes here now. Okay, this was a difficult moment here. Another nice move would have been queen c4. This would have been a nice move to just shut down the game. But okay, I went here. C5 wasn't the best, and after C4, another very important move, C4. You have to find this kind of move, because otherwise he's going to play C4. He's going to play C4, takes Queen C4, and the bishop's going to be very strong. By playing this, I'm keeping his both bishops shut down. The light square bishop is kind of, you know, it's attacking, but it's not attacking anything on, the, on this side, and the bishop only one cannot move anywhere. So after C4, it's... Still probably close to equal, but already a little bit more preferable for the black. Okay? Yes, Suresh? In situation, white is having the pawns on the black square, uh, right? So as we are having the black bishop, can't we capitalize that? Sorry? So white is having the pawns on the black square. White? Yeah. Uh, G3 and... Uh, G3, F2, C3, yes. He has three so pawns. We have black bishop, so can't we capitalize anything like killing... Uh, uh, we cannot win the pawns at the moment. I think the, the A2 pawn is a big target also. Um, we cannot win. I mean, if you trade the bishops, I think... In fact, at the moment, I think my bishop is pretty good here. I don't have a way to trade that bishop. I think my bishop on C5 is quite active in those lines that we looked at it. I mean, look at this position, Suresh. If I play this like this... Sorry. I mean... My bishop is better than his. See? And uh, his bishop is mainly just doing defensive work. And my bishop is actually, you know, controlling a lot of squares, but also putting a lot of pressure here. Yeah, something like this is, uh, yeah, 
if they find I just go h5 and you know try try to go for a win here doubling up the rooks is another idea I can do here I mean computer was even showing like this he was just computer was just playing like this and then playing g5 king g7 I analyzed this very deeply g5 king g7 he just says why cannot do anything you just gradually improve the position if you play like this and but the correct way is to play rook beat uh, this line but then you're forced to give up the a2 pawn and there's absolutely no no chances in this position okay well thank you guys for attending this class and uh we will see you next time okay